Hey guys, so we're back in our service again, the Jump Store store. And in the last video, we set up communication for both our stateful service, the product catalog service, and our stateless service, the customer analytics service. So in this video, we're gonna look at how do we call those remote methods that we set up on those services. And to do this, we're gonna create an API. And we're gonna call the API through a web browser, which is then gonna to proxy to the service that we requested. So let's get started by adding a third service to our solution, and in this case, an API service, just like we looked at in our previous video. So new service fabric service. We want a stateless ASP.NET Core service, so basically an API. And we'll call this communication API. Create that, and that should add the new API service to our application. Again, we can just choose empty or API here. I'll choose API, which will give me some template code that we can just rename and delete some parts of it. So once that's created, we have our communication API service. So we'll just do a little bit of cleanup here. We don't need this weather forecast class that we can delete. And we also have this weather forecast controller. We can just rename that to communication controller. And we can delete most of the content here. So we'll delete this. And we'll also delete this weather forecast method. So we'll add our own methods for communicating with our service fabric cluster. We have our API now, and we need to add methods to this that we can call through our browser to then remote to our service fabric services. So these, this controller will run inside our cluster, communicating with our browser or whatever's calling it. And because this API is running inside our cluster, it is then able to make remote calls to our other services. So pass our requests along to the correct service. So let's add a endpoint here. Again, it's gonna be a get endpoint. At the root here, we'll, we'll just call stateless because we'll be calling our stateless service. And again, it's an async method because we're doing async communication, basically anything that's kind of long running. So this will be somewhat long running as the API will have to return a request to the user and in turn, the API will be making a request to a different service. So it will take a kind of a non-zero amount of time and we'll return a string from this method and we'll just call it stateless, stateless get. And so what does this stateless get? What do we want to do here? We want to proxy to the stateless service that we've created, the customer analytics service, and then return the value that's from this method here, from our get service details method, which will just return the service name. So let's go back to the API controller and let's see how we do this. So again, because we are using the remoting from Service Fabric, we need to add a NuGet package. So in this case, we'll add the Microsoft Service Fabric Services .remoting package. So let's right click on our API and go to manage NuGet packages and browse. So Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting. So once we add this, we should be able to use remoting calls in our API to call other services. So we'll install and accept. Once that's installed, we can then start to implement how this API endpoint is going to proxy to a different service. This is quite simple. We just need to have a reference to the interface that the service implements. So what we created earlier in the communication project. And we also need to have the service and application name that we are calling. So let's start this off by adding the reference to the communication project because we need that to get access to the interface or the contract that we know that the service that we're trying to call implements. So we'll add a reference to communication and that will allow us to use the iStateless interface, which is the interface that we know the stateless service we're communicating with implements. And then what we want to do is we want to create a service proxy between that. So we can make a variable called stateless proxy and that's equal to service proxy, which should be defined in the package we just installed using Microsoft Service Fabric Services Remoting.client. And we want to create a new one. And in these angular brackets, we want to give it the name of the interface that we know the service we're trying to communicate with implements. So AI stateless 
So it's I stateless interface. I need to add the using statement for the communication. And then we need to give it the URI of the service. So where the service is located. So we go new URI. And then the syntax here is fabric semicolon slash and then it is the application name so our application name is jump store store so we need to put that here and then slash and then the service name so our service name for our stateless service is customer analytics so once we have that added we should have our stateless proxy set up and then we can simply call the stateless proxy and this should return us our service name so we want to await the call because it's asynchronous stateless proxy dot get service details and just like we set this up to return it should return the service name and then we can return that service name from our asp.net api endpoint so when a user calls this endpoint we'll create a proxy to our stateless interface service which is basically our customer analytics service. And then we'll call the method get service details on that service and return that to our user. So let's boot this up on our cluster and see does it work. So right click and debug and start new instance. Okay, so we can now see that our application has been successfully deployed and we can see our three services, our communication API, our customer analytics stateless service and our product catalog stateful service. And our product catalog stateful service is still partitioned on a named partition of region. So let's call our communication API and see what happens. So we'll go back here and we need to get the port number for our API. So that, as you remember, is in the service manifest and it's defined down here. So port 8732. So let's go to localhost and then slash communication because it's the name of our controller and slash stateless. And as you can see, it returns the name of our service fabric service. So let's set some breakpoints in there and just see exactly what's happening. So we'll just close all these windows and we'll set a breakpoint in our customer analytics service. So in the method that we're meant to be remoting to, and we'll see if we call it again, will this breakpoint get hit? And we expect that it does. So refresh, and as expected, the service API is proxying to the customer analytics service, which is then getting its service name and returning that. So let's set up something similar for our stateful service. Let's go back to our project and back to our API controller. And we'll add another method here, which proxies to our stateful service rather than our stateless service. So we'll just copy this whole method. And instead of having the root as stateless, let's have the root as stateful. Let's also stop our service to get rid of these purple squiggly lines. And the method name will be stateful get. And we also want to pass a query parameter in this time as because we're communicating with a stateful and a partitioned service, we need to know what partition we're trying to communicate with. So we'll get from the query. So the query parameter will be a string parameter of a region. And then again, we have to build up another proxy. So we'll call this one in this case, stateful proxy. And we use a very similar syntax. So we're saying service proxy dot create. And instead of using the stateless interface that we defined in the previous video, we'll use the stateful interface. So I stateful interface. And then we need to make the new URI. So the application name is still the same, but our service name is now product catalog because that's the stateful service we're trying to communicate with. And because we're communicating with a stateful service, as well as providing the URI, we also need to provide this thing called a service partition key. So I'm going to say new service, service partition key, and that's defined in Microsoft Service Fabric Services Client. 
and we need to just pass this the name of the partition. In this case, we're using named partition. So we can just pass in the string region and we'll do a two upper invariant on that as well. So this should create the proxy to the name of the region that we pass in as a query parameter into our get method here. So finally, we can call the get service details, which is the same method name as on our stateless proxy, but should return both the service name and the partition ID. So let's set a couple of breakpoints here and run it and see what happens. So our service has successfully deployed now. So let's try and call our stateful endpoint. So we'll go back to our local host 8732 here. And the endpoint is now not stateless, but stateful. And we also need to pass a query parameter. So I think we called it region. And we'll say region USA to hit our USA partition. Because if you remember back in our service, if you look in our application manifest, you'll see that the partition names we have are USA, EU, and Japan. So let's make this call. Let's just press enter. And we hit our API endpoint here. We'll create a stateful proxy using the region USA. And then we should go into our stateful service and return both the service name and the partition ID. And as expected, we hit this breakpoint too. So we can see the service name is product catalog and the partition ID is a GUID. So we press continue. So there we go, printed out in our browser, the service name and the partition ID. So if we make that same call again, we should get the exact same partition ID. So back in our browser, A79, refresh again, A79. But if we do it for the EU, we should get a different partition, 6AC and the same for Japan. If we give it something that won't be recognized, say China, we should get an exception because we don't have that partition defined. So invalid partition key for selector.